Hello and welcome to my channel Kaylee Does It. I've had enough of people doing things for me so this is how I'm doing things. I'm going to start off with some DIY fixes on my Volkswagen EOS. In today's video I'm going to show you how to fit these front brake discs. As you can see these are brand new brake discs and they cost about £60 for the pair. There is actually quite a few different sizes of the brake discs for the Volkswagen EOS so I had to take the wheel off my car first and measured them up and I actually measured mine up to be 312 millimetres so make sure you get the right ones. These brake discs have actually come covered in grease that is to actually stop them rusting inside the box. I'm going to clean this up using some brake cleaner. I'm going to clean this now with some brake cleaner. You can get brake cleaner from all different car shops and DIY shops, it's quite easy to get hold of. It's important to clean both sides and get all the grease off because if you don't, the grease will make your brakes squeak. Now these are cleaned up, we just need to fit them to the car. Before you do any work on a Volkswagen brake system, you actually need this specialist tool here. It assembles like this. So you're going to be turning this with some spanners and this part here will then compress the brake pistons and you need to do that in order to fit any new brake discs or pads. This could be the most tricky part of the job because it may be stuck in which case you're going to need to get a new caliper. I like to use my long breaker bar to just crack open the bolts first. I do this before jacking because otherwise the wheel would just rotate. I'm only going to undo them a quarter turn. The last bolt here is actually for the locking wheel nut. Be careful when you use this one, give it a good old turn, make sure it fits in nicely. You want to be careful because you don't want to damage the locking wheel nut as it will cost quite a bit to replace. So it goes and give it a good old turn and then we have it. I've undone all of these a quarter turn, so now all I have to do is jack the car up. You have to be really careful when jacking the car up because if it is to fall you can actually do some damage to yourself not only the car. I'm using two jacks, the jack that actually came with the car and a bottle jack. This groove here has to sit under the sill of the car. There's actually a mark here which indicates the best place to put the jack. The sill is actually back here. Your jack has to sit over that. See how the seal of the car sits nicely into the groove here and the base of the jack is sat really nicely flat on the ground. Now all we have to do is turn it to lift. I just want to go high enough so that the wheel is just off the ground. I don't fully trust this jack here so I'm going to use my secondary jack over here. There's not really an ideal place for it to go but I found a spot just under the subframe so that if this jack does fail I've got a backup just in case. I've done both jacks up now so that they're both holding some weight. You could use an axle stand but I'm not going to. I'm just going to loosen these a little bit more now. Now that I've loosened them a little bit more, I'm going to use the electric screwdriver to undo them fully.
don't forget the locking wheel nut on that last one there. And there we have it. I'm actually going to take my watch off because I don't want it to get damaged. Hopefully your wheel will just come off now. That one is done easily. If yours doesn't come off easily, you might have to give it a kick just to loosen it up. Now I'm going to put my tyre underneath my car, just as another safety feature, in case it was to fall off the jacks. So if my car was now to fall off both jacks, at least I know that it will land on my tyre so that I could get it back off the ground if the worst case scenario happened. Now this is the disc here and in order to remove this we're going to have to remove the caliper first. So here are our brake pads and this is the caliper here. We have two bolts holding it on at the back. To remove the pads we're going to have to remove the caliper by undoing the two bolts. This is the top bolt and we need to undo that. In order to get there we need to undo this little uh, cap here. There's another one underneath and again we need to remove the cap in order to get to the bolt inside. This one's a bit sort of stiff. There we go. Now we need to see what bolt it is. As far as I can see, it's a H7 Allen. Quite hard to see, there we go, that's in. So I'm finding it very difficult to undo, so I am actually using a hammer to knock it round. When they do go, they do go suddenly, so be careful not to knock your hands. Oh, that's better. Twist and pull, and they should come out. I'm trying. Oh, I see it. See? Now we undid those bolts, the caliper is loose and this should just lift off. However, we don't want to damage this hose here, so I'm going to get um, a zip tie or some string to, just to hold it back and not pull on there. We don't want it to break. Because these are actually sat in a groove, we are going to have to open them out somehow first. They're not going to come off easy at all. In order to open those brakes up, we're going to have to undo the lid here of our brake fluid. Just undid really easy. There we go. As we open the brakes up, the brake fluid will rise. If you open up too much, it can actually overflow. So definitely keep an eye on it. I'm going to see if I can open them up slightly by using a crowbar and just levering it open slightly. And do it from the top and the bottom. Budge slightly. I'm not using too much force, to be fair. They will open slowly, so it will take some time and just a bit of pressure. And hopefully we can see them move. Do the same on the bottom because you want to keep it nice and even. I've been levering from this side and this side for about 10 minutes. I'm now going to lever from the front here, but it looks like I need to undo these springs here in order to release it fully. I'm just going to grab it here and pull it around. Move these clips right out. Now, oh, we've got it off now. Now let's try. I needed to get it from the bottom. Thank you. 
It's very heavy. So maybe we just need to balance it up here somewhere where it won't be tugging on the hose. I'm gonna get a hand here to undo the sensor socket for me. Here are the discs and here are the pads. We'll just pull out one it. If we were just changing the brake pads, we wouldn't have to take the caliper holder off. But as we are actually changing the disc today, we need to take the caliper holder off. In order to take the caliper holder off, we have to undo the two 21 millimeter bolts here. So. They were very hard to undo, so I've had to use the breaker bar in order to undo them. Which hasn't been easy. Now that they're loosened slightly, I can just use the spanner now to undo the rest. Quite long as well. Here, yeah, just one. Now the caliper holder comes off. Now in order to take off the disc, we just have to undo the one bolt, which comes off nice and easy. As you can see, the disc just comes right off. Now before handling the new disc, I'm going to give my hands a really good wash and put some gloves on. The reason for putting gloves on is so that I don't get grease all over the new discs. This surface here needs to be quite clean, so I've just given it a quick brush. Now all I have to do is line this up so that my small hole here lines up with the small hole there, which is where the screw will go back in. So all I need to do now is put the screw back in here. Right there, it's going in. There's only one screw that holds the disc to the hub. It's quite incredible really. All the wheel nuts will hold it on once the wheel goes back on. Unfortunately I've got grease all over the disc so I'm going to give it a quick clean before um, putting everything back together again. And that is how you fit a new disc to your Volkswagen EOS. Before refitting the calipers I have to use this brake tool to open the pistons. This is because the new discs are thicker than the old ones. Once they're fully open, the calipers should be easy to refit simply by going in the reverse sequence of what you've seen in this video. Make sure all the bolts are done up tightly and go easy on your new brake as they'll need time to bed in properly. Before driving away, make sure that you pump the brakes a few times to make the pistons go back. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please click that subscribe button. Every subscription will help my new channel. Thanks a lot and bye for now.